What is going on everybody man? King Recon here for another wonderful Friday filled with the awesome sauce man. Before we get into any of the greatness that we're about to witness in today's chapter of the best selling manga in history, I just wanted to apologize for last week. Um, last or the week before last week because I decided to stream it on a whim. I decided that I wanted to do something new that week and I wanted to really talk to y'all after that chapter. But the the negative side of that was that a lot of you notified me that you didn't get the notification for that video. And I'm pretty sure still to this day, there's still some of you that never even knew that that reaction even happened. So I apologize for that, man. I apologize because with YouTube's new live stream system, the new studio uh, system, I don't even know what's going on half the time whenever I go out and stream. It's very, very annoying at times. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, like, it was much simpler to just press stream and then we're good. Now there's all these other layers on top. You never know if it's private or if it's public. Like, one time... I went live and it was private and I'm like, bro, what is going on here, man? Like, why do we continue to fix what's not broken? Why don't you fix what's actually broken, YouTube? You know what I'm saying, man? So, it is what it is, but I apologize for that, man. For any of you who missed out last week's reaction, it did, it did happen, all right? Or the week before last week, I keep forgetting we were on break last week because we got that episode and like, it was, it was, it was awesome, but... Uh, regardless, the week before last week's chapter, there was a video for that, so I apologize if any of you did not get to see it due to the fact that it was streamed. Just that, like I said before, YouTube's new stream system, who knows what's going on anymore? I'm, I know for a fact not even YouTube themselves know what is really going on anymore, man. That's just a straight up fact. But anyways, on a more positive note, ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, and because it is Friday, you know that there is a new chapter. At this current point in time, we are in the Wano Awesome Sauce in the Wano Country. And you know what series I'm talking about, man. We're talking about the best-selling manga in history. I read a stat the other day that said that Oda, if I'm not mistaken, is the 8th? It was either 8th or 12th. One of those. Uh, best-selling authors of all time. I saw Shakespeare at number 1. Uh, this was shared in a Facebook group, but I saw this long list of authors, and the fact that Oda is on there is so cool, because you see everybody else on there, and I mean, these are names of legend, man, names that have been around for hundreds of years, um, and of course, other series that have expanded the entire globe when it comes to their famous novels and whatnot, and the fact that our beloved Awesome Sauce is on there, the fact that our man Ichiro Oda is on a list like that is so cool, man, it's so cool, representing manga in the best way possible. You know what that manga is? It is One Piece! Man, let's get right into the Awesome Sauce of chapter 939. And it is called, An Old Horse Knows the Way. An old horse? One of the flying flagnards is a horse. Barber. Snow! Well, bro, I didn't think that this man, Oda, would... Jimbei looks the same. This has to be Jimbei pre... Pre, um... Pre whatever's going down. Because he said that he did not reveal Oda in certain... Oh, what was it? Certain color pages? Due to the fact that he did not want people to know uh, how he looks like right now. Which had us all assuming that Jimbei either got heavily injured, lost a limb, lost an eye, something. Maybe he got older because a piece of his soul got taken out. We don't know. There's a lot of speculation to what Jimbei actually looks like now. But the fact of the matter is, is still that Oda didn't want us to see Jimbei. That's why I was saying that Jimbei's not in, 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 uh, in movie Stampede. Because I was like... Why is Oda going to reveal Jimbei's design before he reveals it in the manga? So I was a little shook here, man, but it looks like, no, this is still the pre-design uh, from back in Whole Cake and, and before that for Jimbei, man. Since it's just a fun cover page, it doesn't have to necessarily show off what they actually look like now. So I, I was a little shook there, but I was like, is that Jimbei? Like, there's no way that Oda would reveal what Jimbei looks like right now after hiding it from even color pages in a cover page. So, 
It is Jim Bay getting a haircut, man. <laughs> Yo, and this barber is in there like swimwear, man. A spider crab giving Jimbei a haircut at the bottom of the ocean, pen name Hugh. A spider crab, man. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this spider crab has one of the most legendary mustaches that you'll ever see, man. There's no connection point right here. You've got the top of lip right here, and then you've got it going up like this. Ooh! My boy's been grooming that thing, son. Then he has a capo. A hat up there like he's gang gang beige. Uh, Japanese, uh, a Japanese Chinese proverb in the Japanese horse, Uma is changed to leopard, Hyo for a three-way pun. We have tried to make this work in English. So, Uma is horse, changed to leopard, Hyo, which would be to uh, do Kyo. I mean, not do Kyo. <laughs> Kingdom greatness, do Kyo. Our, uh, um, uh, Hyo to the flower. Hyo to the flower, man. Hyogoro, the mother flipping flower. I'm so excited for for Hyogoro's future, especially after playing the Yakuza games. Man, I'm excited for um, the future of, of Hyogoro. Your Momonosuke's younger sister? Yo, we're picking up exactly where we left it off, man. The truth comes out after 20 long years. Oh, I was right. I'm glad I mustered up the courage to say something that was, that it, what a gamble that was. So you do know my older brother. Hold your horses, let me process all this first. Let Zoro breathe, woman. Like, come on, Komorosaki. Or Hiyori, and I, I'm so used to calling him Komorosaki. Come on, Hiyori, relax. It's like dropping a bombshell like that on anyone, man. You gotta let him breathe. You gotta let him relax, man. Especially the fact that Zoro has been with Momonosuke for so long. But, you know, because... Komorosaki and Zoro are, are together like this. And now, it's, now that it is revealed that Hiyori is Komorosaki, it just makes you think that connection back to where Momonosuke said that he was taught that one saying by Zoro. And then Kiku said that that's something that, that, is, that must not be said because it is like forbidden for them. So it makes me think that that entire little thing that was placed in that chapter is going to have some sort of relation to what is going on right here. I mean, it just has to. Because why else would Oda point out that Momonosuke in particular was the one that learned that from Zoro, and then Zoro now meets Hiyori, so... That has, there has to be some sort of connection there. In One Piece, nothing happens for no reason. So he's still alive? Since a strong and kind samurai from the outside world appeared, at the same time that rumors of the Kozuki family's return began to circulate throughout the country, it must mean that you are helping my brother. Ah, but you could also be an enemy that is trying to capture my brother. Don't tell me she's... She, hey, hold on, man. Is she about to have some pudding syndromes? You know how pudding have, like, one face where she's like, eh, eh, and the other face, she's calling him out. She's she's turning heel. She's like the big show. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how big show turns heel and face? He's like, in one moment, he's a bad guy. Another moment, he's a good guy, man. It's like, you never know with the big show. In the same show. On the very same show. Our very same week, he, he, he could have a, a heel or a face turn. Are we going to have that Okamorosaki again, man? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that this is just a uh, going to be her gag in which she is going to say something and then worry about the very same thing that she said. Uh, at least that's what it looks like here. That's actually going to be a pretty funny gag, especially in the anime. I'm an ally, an A-L-L-Y. Oh, that is a relief. In that... <laughs> The fact that Zoro is spelling something out is actually hilarious. In that case, where is Kenny Moan and <laughs> The fact that Zoro has to spell something out for somebody is actually hilarious. <laughs> this man said I'm an ally, an A-L-L-Y. Like, come on, do I have to spell it out for you? In that case, where's Kinemon? What of Conjuring? What of Ryzo? And, and, um, and Kikunojo. Is everyone gathered together? Kikunojo. Then uh, Kikunojo has to be the, the individual that, that we have um, uh, in, in prison. So is that, what, is that what they call Kawamatsu? Is Kikunojo? Is everyone gathered together? I think I get it now. So this is what happened. Momo was sent 20 years into the future and stayed 8 years old. That's why his younger sister is 26 now. Well, whatever. Is it really okay for that kid to know about this? Don't worry, I already knew. It's our little secret. Toko already knew? And that's why he already was protecting Toko so much? Oh, hold on, bro. Hold on, man. You know, last week we were in the stream, we were riling up some conspiracy theories on whether or not Komodosaki is actually Hiyori or not. 
right? And then some people brought up the possibility that Toko could possibly be Hiyori. But I don't know. You know, like I said before, uh, I'm a fan of Komurasaki actually being Hiyori due to the simple fact that I really wanted the Shamisen player, since that is what opened up the arc, to be something very, very important. And of course, what, what more important than than uh, the sister to Momonosuke, right? So I'm okay with it, but regardless, man, hey, this is One Piece, man. You, you never know, you never know. You know, you could be led, a, led down one path and then he breaks your ankles, hits you with, hits you with an Allen Iverson crossover, takes it in, lays it in, man. That, that's the way Oda does things. So I don't know, but there's definitely something more to this whole Otoko and Hiyori situation. Otoko is one of the few friends I know that knows the truth. One of the few friends. So more people? Then just those those two know? Just a few friends. That means that somebody else has to know. Kyoshiro? Yo! Listen to me, man. It might just be. I mean, who else? Who else do we know that has been indicated to be a friend of, of Hiyori or Kumurasaki, right? That, uh, that, that we know that has spent a lot of time with her. Kyoshiro. Kyoshiro's the only one. Her cheerful attitude has helped push me has helped me to push forward. I will never forget what happened 20 years ago. Even though I was just a child back then and was even younger than Otoko is now. Inside the raging fire, I saw my brother and everyone else vanish. And on the same day I lost my father Odin and my mother too. Man, dude. It's like having that trauma from such a young age, not even knowing what is going on. But knowing that you've been left all alone in this world, man, that's that's something that sucks, man. You know. Now, when she says, and my mother too, then that means that Lady Toki either died in the fire as well, or just died there on that night. Or she could have been another time jump. Who knows? Still, inside the raging fire, I saw my brother and everyone else vanish. And on that same day, I lost my father, Odin, and my mother, too, man. What a thing, man, for a child to have to go through. You know what I'm saying? You'd be so confused about. But what I want to know is how did she know of the plan all of these years later, if she was that young back then, you know, like who told her? What kind of will was left to, to Hiyori where, where, or maybe she found out late, way later on down in life, the truth. I wonder how it is that, that, that she came to know that. I lost everything on that day. My brother promised that he would return in 20 years, but I had no faith in his uncertain promise. That is why at that time I lost my will to live. Why didn't you just go with them? Because in case the plan failed, they wanted to ensure that there was a way for the Kozuki bloodline to survive. That actually makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Because they didn't know the fullest extent, I guess maybe Toki, because Toki, I'm going to assume, had been traveling by herself for such a long time, that maybe there was that little strain of, okay, I don't know if this will work on multiple people. So she used the ability on, of course, everyone else that we see right now in present day. And just as a, as a fail safe, just in case that, 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 that the plan actually did fail, that they were going to use Hiori as the true heir to the Kozuki family. Or at the very least, a, uh, a, a way for the Kozuki bloodline to still survive some way, somehow, with her. You know, being being the lone survivor, if that would have been the case. That actually makes a lot of sense, because I had been wondering myself why it is that Toki just didn't send Hiyori with them, too. And I thought there was some little weird thing going on there. But that actually does make a lot of sense. That must have been tough. My father's retainer, Kawamatsu the cop. There we go! My father's retainer, Kawamatsu the Kappa, took care of me with such immense patience. So Kawamatsu was the one that took care of Hiyori. So this man, Kawamatsu, 
was on some Kazuma Kiryu stuff, man, taking care of Haruka. Yo, shout out to Kawamatsu, man. Shout out to Kawamatsu. I respect people who take in others who are not their family but treat them as their own. Uh, I, re I respect them so much, man. A Kappa? Yes, I am sure. That is hard to that is hard for you to believe that such a demon exists, but he is proud of that fact. On the day the castle burned down, enemies were, sur were surrounding us from all sides, but he was able to dig a hole into the water channel and we escaped without anybody noticing. Princess, please hold on. Oh, so Kawamatsu is factually 100% confirmed to be the one that had that uh, hat on. That's, that's, that's actually really cool. Princess, this is the Kappa dance. And we see him dancing. Okay, he's putting on the moves. He always tried to cheer me up, even though I had remained mute since that day. So 100%. Now there is no other... Um, There's just 100% that, 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 that he already is Komodosaki now. 100%. After seeing this flashback and seeing the way that this uh, has been handled so far, I think it's... I think everything we were seeing last week... Can be thrown out the window. <laughs> or at least some of it. Some of it. You know, because some of it could still be factual of what we were seeing last week in the stream. But almost all of it can be thrown out the window at this point, man. He would let himself go hungry so I could have enough to eat. Man, you know, in a similar way that, um, that, uh, that, um, the Tengu, you know, would take care of Tama. Uh, something about a stomach ache. I caught a fish in the river earlier, so I roasted it and ate it. Ka pa pa pa! Little by little, he was able to make me laugh. So where is he now? We were separated from one another when I was 13. 13 years. But Kawamatsu was a very, is a very strong samurai. He must be waiting somewhere for the final battle. I can't wait to see my man Kawamatsu throwing hands, man, if that's the case. I really want, I really want to see him again. So that's their connection. You know, uh, Hiyori has a connection to Kawamatsu, which in turn might mean that Kawamatsu might have a connection to Kyoshiro. If, if, if we have like that sort of... Uh, thing going down there as well. What? The doggy and the kitty are here too? I heard they died. Well, I don't know if Nekomushi has arrived yet. Yo, hold on, bruh! Hey, hold on, man! But there is some respect. I gotta put some respect. Okay, now, but I understand. I understand, man. At that age, you... you, you <laughs> Yo, she knew... Uh, Nakamushi and Inarashi as Doggy and Kitty, man. That's actually really cute. That is actually extremely cute. What's with that face? Uh, she, she puts on like a mad, just cute expression. I am so happy. Too happy. But I will not cry because I'm the daughter of a Sabra. <laughs> hey, he's a troll. Uh, big sis, you're hilarious. I agree. I agree, Toko. I agree. We've got these six people along with Momonosuke. The nine red scabbards. You're the confirmation. Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kiku, Inarashi, Nekomushi. But I haven't met the last three. The last three have to be Ashura Doji, Kaomatsu, and then the... I always forget that third one's name, man. It was a Densetsu, right? Was it? I, I don't remember, man. But uh, it was it was those three from, from the, the flashback in chapter 920. One of them is Kawamatsu, the man I was just talking about, and the other two are De Denjiro. That was his name, Denjiro. Denjiro and Ashura Donji. I said Densetsu. It's because I've been playing, um, flipping uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2, and they call it Ma the Majima Corporation, Majima Densetsu, and that's why I had that stuck in my head. Um, I have no idea where those three are or whether they are safe, but right now the capital's in chaos because of this picture. So they will definitely appear when they see it. So it is due to the picture... And due to the fear of that picture, that the entire capital is is going crazy. Which makes me very interested, because um, now that we have that confirmation, Kyoshiro, just a couple chapters ago, after he cut Komorosaki, proceeded to look at that picture. But I don't see Kyoshiro's type of dude who will rat out or just snitch, even if it's somebody from the opposing team. You know what I'm saying? Or from, or from what, whoever he's supposedly going up against. I don't see him going up and snitching, especially to somebody like Orochi, about something like that, right? So that means that somebody else must have gotten wind of that mark or something else must have happened around those lines because I still, it just, I don't see Kyoshiro being that type of dude. I, I don't see that being a part of his personality. So somehow, some way, they must have seen that mark uh, after Kyoshiro. Uh, saw it, but it's very interesting that Kyoshiro was the one to see it. 
So anyways, confirmation that the nine red scabbards are in fact Kanemon, Kanjiro, Raizo, Kiku, Inarashi, Nekumushi, Kawamatsu, Denjiro, and Ashura Doji, which does make nine red scabbards. That picture helped us spread the information faster, but the most important part, the meetup location, was leaked, and our allies are being captured one by one. No matter how you look at it, it's not a good situation. I wonder what's going to happen. We may have more boatmen now, uh, but our boat definitely isn't moving like we wanted to. Maybe I should stop thinking about it. Yes, yes, you need to rest, Zoro Judo. That way your wounds can heal. Please go to sleep, Zoro. And healing wounds? Listen to me, man. For as long as for as long as I've known this man, for as long as I've been reading this series, this man goes into almost every major arc with some sort of injury. That's just Zoro. That is just the way it works. Along with Zoro's direction gag, and along with the with, with the fact that this man always gets lost, you can always count on this man getting injured before a big battle. That's just the way it works. That is just the way it works with Zoro, man. And I'm so happy my brother's alive, Otoko. And that's great. Ha! Ah, they're so loud. How am I supposed to sleep like... Zoro, I don't want to hear that. I do not want to hear that coming from Zoro. But listen, man. This is the same dude that you can have the entire crew. And I've seen it. We've seen it. In the manga and in the anime. And in all types of situations. Where the crew is so loud and rambunctious. I mean, they are going ham. They're partying. They're doing it. And this man, Zoro, has a snot bubble larger than the planet Earth, man. I mean, he is out, coach. He is out, man. He is like me whenever I'm I'm watching an episode of Monday Night Raw, man, during the eleventh hour or during the third hour. I'm just I'm, I'm out. I'm slumped, man. I'm ready to go to bed, dog. That's how this man Zoro is at all times. But I mean, with all the training he puts in, with with with, with how much this man actually does put uh, put in, like how much work this man actually puts in, whenever he's actually doing something, I can't blame him for always being sleepy. But to think that he's still eight years old, how mysterious. Everyone is going to look the same as back then. I wonder what would happen if I went to meet them now. That is very, very interesting, right? You know, you, you just thinking about it from that perspective. Like, this man is your older brother. In actuality, he's supposed to be 28. But instead, he's actually only eight. So, he's your older brother, but you're way older than him freaking 18 years so that's gonna be a fascinating situation like oh, hey uh, can you imagine somebody just randomly peeping into the conversation hey older brother it's been a long time older brother and you see momonosuke's little small self and you see he already mad big like as, as any random person would be like what in the flying flag is going on here i know i certainly would be maybe i should wait until after the final battle otherwise it might disturb their plans isn't that right otoko so confirmation from Oda right here that more than likely we're going to get the Hiyori and Momonosuke converse, or at least their their meetup, uh, that emotional moment where they finally get together again uh, after the final battle, which is something that a lot of us expected. But it's nice to see Oda also telling us there um, as well. The flower capital Rasetsu district. And then we see the um, we see the the, the the giraffe tree. Get in there, you traitors! So you all were living off the capital's resources while waiting for the chance to rebel. How impudent! This is a nice double page spread, man. How unfortunate! Your plan has been exposed already. You have failed. Yo, this man has been putting in work, bro. Let me tell you something, man. These dudes, the Onibabanshu of Orochi, they factually put in work, man. I mean, when when you're out here, I mean, they they immediately, no, almost no one catches on to Robin whenever she's in a stealth mode, and the fact that they caught up, to, they caught on to her so quickly, and now they're catching on to individuals who are planning to rebel. Hey, they're not useless, man. These dudes put in work. Hold on just a second, sir. Fuku Kuju. What proof do you have that that symbol is a mark of rebellion? It's nothing more than a long-forgotten symbol that used to be popular. I know nothing of any rebellion. Excuse me. Silence, if that is the truth, then why do you also have this riddle in your position? In your possession. Lord Orochi just put an, an imperial order, so just stay in there and behave yourselves. Rasetsu District Prison, a.k.a. the Prisoner Showcase. To think there were this many... 
Oh, the pastor buys take a take a close look. This that this actually looks like a really really cool building. I just love the design of it. This is what you, you this is what will become of you if you try to oppose the Lord Lord Orochi and Kaido. Look at those idiots. What a show. Look, more more are being thrown in. This is the worst possible situation. I hope they don't want I hope they don't think we ran our mouths. Captain will definitely believe us. Captain. No. Bro, Beppo got smoked. Yo, Law, man, listen. Listen, man. I know that Law is all about being logical. I know that Law is all about, you know, taking care of the situation. But I hope that some of Luffy has rubbed off on him since he's been together with him since Punk Hazard. And I hope that Law just goes out of his way to go in like so more to, to avenge his crew, man. I would love a moment like that because it would just show that even a person like Law who is normally calm and calculated when in in that situation presented with his crew being captured and tortured and I mean they beat on these dudes look at the, look at how bloody the Bapo and his crew are yo man Law better go up in like Summer hit him with the biggest room and better slice and dice all the way to kingdom come are you kidding dude this man brought a press the biggest combo in the history of combos, man. Square, triangle, circle, analog stick, R1, 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 circle, triangle. He better hit him with the longest combo known to mankind. They don't even get a silver trophy out of that thing, man. I need it. I need it, man. I love me some Beppo. I love me Law's crew. I love some Law. This is the perfect situation. I mean, listen to me, man. It could go either way. Because in One Piece... Whenever you don't act on a certain thing, it sometimes make it, it makes it even more cooler. But one of the things that I really love about this series is that when something when somebody does something to you, you don't act on it. But when somebody does somebody to when somebody does something to to somebody that you love, to somebody that you care about, that is when you act. Law, let the Luffy rub off on you. Let the rage come in. And I want you to hit this prison with the biggest room. I mean, if you thought that the room that he hit whenever he cut that mountain in half in Punk Hazard it was huge, let this man get word of what just happened to Beppo and his crew, man. Love it or slice and dice half the flower capital. You know, this entire time, we have been saying Luffy's the reason why this why this plan won't go. Luffy and and Zoro and 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 the rest of the Straw Hats are gonna be the reason why this plan doesn't th doesn't actually work out. Lo and behold, watch Law be the reason why our plan fails, and why our plan will not actually go the way that we wanted it to go, because he's, and Law is gonna allow the Luffy and the emotion to actually overcome whatever situation that happens like this. I can just see it. Who wouldn't act in a situation like this? I don't care how common collected you are. So hopefully, man, whenever Law goes up in like swimwear and we see him uh, once again and he gets here because we know that he's on the way, hopefully he slices and dices everyone here to pieces, man. I mean, I, I understand that um, the only Wabon Shu are just doing and, and carrying out their orders, but, you know, you can could, you could only be on one side, man, and, and I'm definitely on Law's side for this one because I'm close to their crew, man. Udon, the prisoner mines. Do it. I'll do <laughs> the Emperor, man. Do it. Alpaca man. Madilo man. Let me see Kawamatsu right here. I want a sumo wrestle too. You know what? My guy's a showman too. He wants the sumo wrestle. Paka paka. No, oh, he says paka kaka. That's what he says. Madelo man. He's one of the gifters. Armadillo smile user. This is the end of the line for you two. We have sea stone bullets made exclusively in the Wano country. Uh, not exclusively, my friend. <laughs> not exclusively, but again, then again, he wouldn't know. Hey, put your gun away, Madijo man. Dude, this man's in front of Luffy, bro, listen. We just saw what Luffy did in the last chapter. And, and, and how this man has been going ham this entire arc, bro. This dude is just gonna grovel. It, it, the moment that Luffy activates his hockey, bro, this man's just gonna grovel at his feet. In the face of the king, the match will end too quickly. What a boring match that'd be. Shut up, this is an execution. Are they blind? This won't be the end. Yo, Queen is like, are they blind? This won't even be near the end. Yo, Queen putting respect on Luffy's name, man. 
Gramps, run to the right. Bend your knees and jump. Huh? Run to the right! We see Hyogoro runs. Luffy heads off. Bend my knees. So then he he runs to the night, or he runs to the right, bends his knees. You bass and jump. Yo, this man when the hold on, Luffy, bro, wait a sec. Dog, this man's this man's observation hockey is so far. He was able to see that far ahead? Hold on, dog. Hey, I'm what did I tell y'all? That match with Carter Curry was some insane training, man. That match with Carter Curry, we're now seeing, I mean, throughout this arc, we've been seeing the fruits of that training, but especially now. You know how far that is? This man's looking into the future like he's Dio. Well, Dio doesn't look in the future, but it looks like he's stopping time. You feel me? Bend your knees and jump. He told him what to do. Yo, Luffy, man, somebody with Master of Shinaki could be a, an insanely good tactician, man. A godly tactician. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, and jump. So he gets there, he, he pones the Apocalypse man, hits him in the chin. Seriously, Grandpa Hyo is so agile. Yo, listen, man. They think he's agile now. And this is me saying this. I'm pretty sure whenever we see Hyo in his prime, ooh, now that's gonna be an agile dude. Uh, good, good, good job, Gramps. So we see this man get pwned. What was that? Can you see the future? Now the left side, of course. You know if we can see the future, man. That's the king. Yo, man, Luffy at the end of this arc is gonna be something serious, dog. He's gonna be something serious. Now the left side. You bastard, left. So, so he dodges him. I can't hit him. What's up with this guy? Luffy goes in. He starts fighting um, the armadillo. As if that didn't work, you fool. Armadillo guard. Luffy hockeys up. No, I did it wrong. This is just normal armament. Normal armament. Normal. I did it wrong. This is just normal. He's not hitting me? Which way? Now, Strat, man. Buckstyle, You're fine as, as is. This man said, you're fine as is. Goes around. He grabs him and now starts carrying him. Gee, gee, gee. This is more fun. How absurd put me down. If I were to cause any more trouble for you, the heavier the better. I'm training. Even though you were caught and forced into an execution game, even stopping your punches short, shouting out, I did it wrong over and over. What exactly are you? This man, he, this is just, they're, they're fodder to him, bro. This might as well be, like I said last week, this man is in a, is in a training session in Dead or Alive 6, which I've been having a lot of fun with, by the way. He's in a random training session in Dead or Alive 6, man. And, you know, he goes into the training. He's not expecting them to attack back anyway. Or even if they do attack, they're not going to do damage. So he's like, you know what? Let me practice my combos. R1, triangle, circle, oscillation, hockey. Let's hit this. Uh, R2, square. I mean, he's just, he's training. He doesn't need any of them. He, he, he my boy is using this. He's taking this extremely quote unquote bad situation execution ground and turning it into a, into something useful turning it into something that he could actually use uh in his fight with kaido because he's already said he wants to take him down after getting one shot by kaido listen man was when i lose in anything i want to come back and go in like swim more as soon as possible and and uh and either defeat whoever i lost to or overcome the situation that i've been presented that's just that person i am so just seeing how usually that's how competitive people are and we know luffy's a competitive person just based off the fact um that we just know the way that he is so i 100 percent expect that from him taking an l from kaido i'd bounce back and use and, and want to train as well and what better way especially whenever he sees all these in, i mean he, he fodderized like so many of them with conqueror Saki. he said you know what none of these dudes can stand up to me let's train Let's use this as an opportunity to to just get better in in, in terms of my abilities. That's it. It's not like I don't want to punch them. I just want to shoot out a powerful punch enough to push them back without touching them. Listen, bro. I just want to shoot out a punch powerful enough to push them back without touching them. If I can do that, I think I'll be able to break through Kaido's tough scales. But I won't know for sure until I try. Hold on, bro. So while fighting off against Kaido, he noticed that his scales were very hard to hit against. So he thought back to Rayleigh, and he thought back to what he did. And how he was, how he was able to take out um, and, and control and really um, uh, take on those beasts back on that island. 
So now he's trying to utilize this very same thing to go up against Kaido because Kaido, of course, is somebody that he's never uh, gone up against. And with skin as hard as that, I mean, he has dragon scales. So he's saying that he wants a punch powerful enough to push them back without touching them. Because if he can do that, in his mind, he thinks he'll be able to break through Kaido's tough scales, which is basically Oda telling us that as well. That if Luffy is able to master this, this new form of hockey that he's trying to do, then that he'll be able to, at the very least, do damage to Kaido. That's very fascinating. I've seen it before, and it's still color of armor and hockey, but this hockey you speak of must be what outsiders call it. Hold on, I've seen it before, and it's still color of Arnim and Hockey, but... Oh, and then we see Sentomaru as well doing his, what, what, what he does. Okay, so how can you speak of what's being allowed? I'm just call it. Stratman here in Wano, we also have an ability like that. It is transferred to a sword from the user's body. Transferred to a sword from the user's body so that when we want to cut something, our sword will cut even the thickest of steel. Ah... Yo, going all the way back to um, whenever Zoro was, was taking on Daz Bones. And when he and when we do not want to cut something, our sword will not cut the thinnest of paper. The sword becomes one with the sword master. A long time ago, I learned that technique from a sword master. I do not know if I will be able to teach it to you, but please watch this. Yo, that's so cool. So Luffy's going to learn a technique from Hyogoro. The healer from a sword master, so because it's Wano, Luffy's gonna learn something that people usually do to apply to their blades, but Luffy's gonna be able to apply it to his hands or just in general. That's really, really interesting. So we see Hyogoro. Tell me what would happen. Tell me what will happen. He's gonna swing the sword in his right hand with everything he's got. Yo, this man's hitting with a Joseph Joestar, bro, and then he does it anyway. He hears him do it, and he still does it anyway. <laughs> Hits him with a Joseph Joestar. He goes in, punches. Hyogoro, yo, and then Hyogoro does it himself. We see that he hockeys up and he hits him with the palm. Like he sent to Umaru. He deflected it. Yo, he hit him with that sent Umaru Rayleigh thing. Looks like, I've, it looks like you've still got your life left in you, Gramps. And we see Queen. Queen's happy. See, I love me some Queen, man. Queen's just looking for a good time. Alpaca man. Whoa, Grandpa Hyo, you did what? He defeated one of the gifters? So Grandpa Hyo really is Hyogoro of the Flower. Hyogoro of the Flower! That's such a fire name, man. What were you trying to do? Was that it? If so, I may be able to help you. Whoa, that's the one? Please teach it to me! So Hyogoro knows the technique that Luffy's trying to learn. So now Hyogoro will be able to teach Luffy, and will be able to be Luffy's master in, in teaching him this, this form of hockey which they apply to their blades to be able to cut even, like I said, the thinnest paper, well, I mean, the thickest of steel, whatever the case may be, they can be able to cut through it. Yo, so to be, to be able to deflect the scales, to be able to go through the scales so they can actually get to his actual skin to put in damage. Man, dude. That's actually really cool. So now we're going to have a training session with, with Hyogoro. So Hyo is going to be his master, man, in teaching him this, this. So while throughout this entire situation here in Udon, it's going to be like a, a more of a training session for Luffy, especially now that he has a master that's going to teach him. But man, dude, the simple fact that now Luffy's going to be able to learn this new technique that, it, of course, he saw Ray and Satomaru do before, and then now he's going to learn from Hyogoro. But also, we just see the fruits of his training with from Katakuri, man. I mean, he can see... Several seconds ahead of to the future, man. I mean, he's telling Hyogoro when to dodge, when not to dodge. You know, when to look this, when to do this, when to jump. I mean, he told him to hit his combo. He said, "In over here, just run to the right, and then get on your knees and jump. You hit me right there. Like, man, that's some insane observation in hockey, man. So, Luffy can already see that far. And uh, this arc, of course, has not finished, and he's only going to get stronger and stronger, so it's going to be really cool to see them here at the end of the arc. But I'm interested in seeing more about this ability, that uh, because I had been interested on it ever since he brought up the idea, but now that we know exactly what it is, and what he's planning on using it for, which is Oda basically telling us that he is, once he masters this, he'll at the very least be able to do damage to Kaido, man. That is interesting. That's super fascinating. Because it's something that people that have been to Wano 
or people from Wano know. You know, and it's so cool that he's gonna learn a swordsman technique to apply in just his regular abilities. Which will fit, you know, this entire thing. But man, what a what what a, what a pretty cool chapter this week. So the first half, we actually got to see Hyori and her just being her and her connection to um to Omonosuke and how much she does care about that simple fact and the fact that uh, we have confirmation now that, that she plans to meet Momonosuke after the arc ends. So in post Wano, we can expect that. And then, of course, uh, Zoro and her and, and, and their interaction. Zoro revealing that the nine red scabbards are, in fact, the individuals we have seen so far, as well as the ones that were mentioned before. And then, of course, getting uh, more insight into Hiyori and who she is as a character and now we, we question what happened to Toki. Like, did Toki put herself into the future? Did Toki die? You know, all the way back then. I guess that's something that has yet to be revealed. And we'll see later on down the line. But uh, that's just very interesting. Because what what's fascinating about the entire situation is that Komodosaki could very well be Lady Toki. And Otoko could be Hiyori. And they themselves could have also could have also went into the future. Because it's it's a very similar age. A very, very similar age. And what Komorosaki said could very well be some made up story. But I don't believe that to, to be the case right now due to the connection with Kawamatsu. You know? So I don't know man. I don't know. It's just very, very interesting. It's a very interesting scenario. It's a very interesting situation. But it's some food for thought. It's some food for thought, man. But, so we got all of that right there. And then, of course, we got to see all the way back to the prison mine. And seeing that what actually did set off everything was the um, that mark that the capital is just losing their minds over right now. And it just leads you back to where Kyoshiro first saw that mark. You know? Also, and about the few friends thing, about Komodosaki saying... That she has a few friends that know about this truth aside from herself. So it's like, did this Kyoshiro know too? Uh, because what other friend is there, right? And then, of course, probably. Well, then again, a few friends could just be Kawamatsu, and the other the other individuals who of the, who are the nine scabbards. But I don't think that that's what Oda was alluding to. I think Oda was alluding to people that we had just introduced, who we were just introdu introduced to into this arc, in this arc, like Toko or Kyoshiro, or whatever the case may be. And then um, going on the second half of this chapter and seeing the fruits of Luffy's training, seeing how far he gets into the future, and then of course now learning this new version of hockey which originates from Swordsman. That's going to be really, really cool just to see how this entire situation plays out. And I love how Oda once again told us what this is going to be used for, why this is important. And Luffy needs to master this in order to get through Kaido's tough skin, his dragon skills, so he can deliver some damage. So this is very fascinating, man. I'm excited. Can't wait for more. The Wano greatness just continues to go in like swimwear. I can't believe that chapter next week will already be chapter 940. No break next week. So um, fun stuff, man. Cannot wait for more. Really nice stuff. Great. A lot of really nice information this week. I really, really want to see, once again, the law go up in like swimwear and save his crew and just go in for them, man. I mean... I want to see the effects that Luffy has had on him. And I think that would be a really cool situation to present that. Uh, to see Law lose his cool over his crew. To show that he really does care about his crew. I think that would be really cool. Um, to see something like that. And um, I can't wait to see everything else that we have here going on in the Wano Greatness. Because everything just continues to escalate. More th plot threads continue to be. It feels like when somebody gets introduced, then that's whenever something else gets revealed. Kawamatsu gets introduced... Uh, we get we get a revelation that Hiyori's can uh, we see Hiyori's connection to Kawamatsu, so and and that's so cool to me though man that Kawamatsu was was like that father figure to Hiyori, and we have that connection right there man so exciting stuff I cannot wait for more stuff from the one of awesome sauce after this chapter I kind of want to go back and just reread the entire arc again man, but uh, tomorrow new episode yeah, I'm really excited for it it's gonna be the Revolutionary Army chapter chapter 904 in animated form that's gonna be a fun chapter to see in the anime 
But aside from that, man, I hope everybody has an awesome sauce of a day. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, the One Piece awesome sauce as always was great. I really enjoyed this chapter. So I will see y'all next time. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know what theories or speculation you have for the future and what y'all thought about this chapter, about the revelations in this chapter, and about anything else that you would like to add about the One Piece series this week, man. So we'll see y'all next time. Have an awesome day. Uh, have a great weekend as well, man. I hope all of you really do have a great weekend. And I'll see y'all next time, man. Shout out to Hyogoro the Flower, though, bro. I told, I, I've been hyping this man up since I first saw him. With a name like Hyo, he had to be a goat, but I didn't know he was going to be this goat, man. I can't wait to see Hyogoro now, and I can't wait even more to see Hyogoro in his prime, man. Hyogoro of the Flower. That's such a beast name.